Happy Friday morning. It is Friday, September the 11th. Kind of a special day in the history of our nation as we commemorate another anniversary of the tragedy, the terrorist attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. So today's always kind of a solemn day in America, at least it has been for 19 years or so. But anyway, I hope that you're blessed in the Lord. I hope that you're excited about the Lord's Day that's coming. We'll be in the second part of our new sermon series, Jesus is Better. I hope you're enjoying that. I am. And I think that this is a very important time that our church is in right now uh, as we... Um, as we proclaim that Jesus is better than anything, and then we take on these uh, projects and activities to affect our community for the good uh, in response to that truth, that Jesus is better. And because he's better, we want to change the world. Today's devotion is titled Fire in the Desert. It's the story of Moses and the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3. Verses 1 through 10. Here's what the scripture says. Exodus 3, beginning at verse 1. Now, Moses was pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said also, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I've come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore come now and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Man, what, a, what an inspiring moment that must have been. I mean, can you imagine being, being met there like Moses was by the Lord? And this, I mean, the Lord gives Moses this just tremendous mission to be on and says that through his hand, God is going to do these great works. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. It's those kind of passages in the Bible that inspire me to give all that I have to the Lord. So here's what the devotion says. It says, while riding in the Chihuahua Desert in the late 1800s, Jim White spotted a strange cloud of smoke spiraling skyward. Suspecting a wildfire, the young cowboy rode toward the source, only to learn that the smoke was a vast swarm of bats spilling from a hole in the ground. White had come across the New Mexico's uh, come across New Mexico's Carl, Carlsbad Caverns, an immense and spectacular system of caves. As Moses was tending sheep in a Middle Eastern desert, he too saw an odd sight that grabbed his attention, a flaming bush that didn't burn up. When God himself spoke from the bush, Moses realized he had come to something far grander than it had first appeared. He, he told Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham. God was about to lead an enslaved people to freedom and show them their true identity as his children. Let me read that sentence again. God was about to lead an enslaved people to freedom and show them their true identity as his children. 
And that's the work that Jesus does for us today. More than 600 years earlier, God had made this promise to Abraham. And he said, All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The flight of the Israelites from Egypt was but one step in that blessing. God's plan to rescue his creation through the Messiah, Abraham's descendant. Today, we can enjoy the benefits of that blessing. For God offers this rescue to everyone. Christ came to die for the sins of the whole world. By faith in him, we too become children of the living God. Man, what, a, what an amazing story. I don't, I don't know that I have a lot to add to that story, except that for thousands of years now, people have been adopted into the family by God's love and grace through the work of Jesus on the cross. What a blessing. What a blessing. As you look forward to Sunday and as you prepare your hearts for worship, I pray that that would be a part of the recipe, that your heart would be fixed on the idea that there's an amazing, awesome, powerful God in heaven who has worked in the lives of men in the past and even in the day that we're in now and will into the future work in such a way to bring people, his children, into his family, all by the work of Jesus, who took on flesh and dwelt among us. I hope that blesses your day. I'll see you Sunday.